on. The official time is 7 o'clock, so I am going to get started. Meeting is called to order at 7 o'clock. The Run Me Board of Education meeting is called to order. The Board of Education is in compliance with Chapter 231 of the Public Laws of 1975 entitled the Open Public Meetings Act. The time, date, and location of this meeting was appropriately advertised by notifying the retrospect, as well as posting notices in the Borough Hall, Run Me Post Office, Mary Bowles, Eli Bingham, Grace Downing School, and the Run Me Public School District website. Will all of you please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So this evening is our re Is everyone able to hear me? Yes. Chat, there's a volume button in the top right hand corner. If you push that. Um, this evening is our reorganization meeting, um, so I have the honor of starting the meeting off and um, providing administering the oath to our board members who were just elected. Um, Angel Beaton was elected with 2,911 votes, Daniel Murray was elected with 3,141 votes, and Dennis Lego was elected with 2,857 votes. At this time, we're going to administer the oath of office. For anyone joining the meeting, the agenda is also posted on the main district website, runamedschools.org, to ensure the fact that the oath of office goes smoothly while board members have been given a copy of it, so that way they can follow along as I read aloud. So I will read the sentence, and then the board members elected will repeat that sentence after me. I state your name. I am Dennis Mark. To solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. To solemnly swear to support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same and to the governments established in the United States and this state. And that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same and to the governments established in the United States and this state. Under the authority of the people, so help me God. Under the authority of the people, so help me God. I say your name. I Do solemnly swear that I possess the qualifications prescribed by law for the office of member of a board of education. I do solemnly swear that I possess the qualifications prescribed by law for the office of member of a board of education. That I am not disqualified as a voter pursuant to New Jersey SA 194-1, and that I will faithfully, impartially, and justly perform all the duties of the that office, according to the best of my ability, so help me God. I am not disqualified as a voter pursuant to NJSA 19-1, and I will be legally and impartially and justly perform all the duties of the office, according to the best of my ability, so help me God. Congratulations. All of you have received your certificates from the state of New Jersey, telling that you were elected as Board of Education member. Welcome back onto the board, since all of you were on the board previously. At this time, I will be doing roll call. Ms. Adair. Here. Ms. Beebe? Here. Mr. Buckheim? Here. Sorry. Mr. Buckheim is here. No, I'm good. Again, he's, I'm going to be calling Mr. Buckheim to. Mr. Lego? Here. Mr. Murray? Here. Ms. Panzarella? Here. I don't know. Ms. Yeah. Sams? I don't know. And Ms. Baldy? Here. Yeah, have a quorum. Also present, Mark Iannucci, Superintendent, myself, Business Administrator, Director of Curriculum, Jay Yezzi, Principal of Bayman Downing Schools, Steve Peely, Principal of Vol School, Steve Maloney, Vice Principal of Vol School, um, Claudia Supper, Director of Special Education, and Frank Hines, Supervisor of Buildings and Grounds. Um, at this time, in accordance with NJSA 18A colon 12-24.1, every board member will review and abide by the Code of Ethics as provided by the New Jersey School Boards Association. Um, my job each year is to review the fact and ensure that each member of the board has received the Code of Ethics, and that I will then have them sign off that they have received it, and we'll keep that on file throughout the course of this year. Um, so all board members have received that, and we are acknowledging the fact that that is reviewed. At this time, I will be opening up from board members um, nominations for board offices, the first one being the board um, president. Do we have a nomination for board president? I'll nominate Samantha Spalding as board president. I'll second I'll that. Angel Beebe nominated Samantha Spalding, seconded by Dan Murray. Do we have any other nominations? Yeah. 
seeing that there are no other nominations, um, at this time I will close those nominations and with a motion made by Angel Beebe and a second by Dan Murray for Samantha Spalding as board president, I will now do a roll call vote. Ms. Adair? Yes. Um, Ms. Beebe? Yes. Mr. Buckheim? Yes. Mr. Lego? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. Ms. Danzarella? Yes. And Ms. Spalding? Yes, thank you. I'm just checking. I can't hear you. Mute yourself. Oh, I apologize. I was just checking to see if Ms. Dan's going just yet. Um, okay, so without further ado, congratulations to Ms. Spalding, who will be our board president for the 2021 year. At this time, I will turn the meeting over to President Spalding, who will move on with vice president nominations. Thank you. Could you do me a favor? Yes. Can you stop sharing your screen for us just for a sec with the flag? Do you want the agenda? Um, that would be great. But when I, yeah, sure. You can share. You can continue to share your screen if you're going to put the agenda up for me. Even though I don't have my old eyes. All right. I'm going to look like a window here. Okay. So at this time, I need to. Um, what do we got here? A motion for vice president. I, okay. I need a motion for vice president. Does anyone I would like to make a motion to nominate Dan Murray for vice president. A motion made by Maria for Dan Murray. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Is that a second from Patty first? Is that you, Patty? Yes. Okay. I have um, a nomination made for Daniel Murray by Maria Panzarella, seconded by uh, Patty Adair. Do we have any other motions at this time? All right. So at that time, if there's no other motions, then I need a motion to. Uh, okay, you can. I got it. Motion. We can go right to roll call. Wait. I'm in a Karen. I was in the middle. I caught myself. I was in the middle of a sentence. Relax. Hit the mute button. Mark, can you mute him? Oh, motion made by Maria and seconded by um, by Patty. We have. Um, I need roll call for approval for Daniel Mary to be vice president. Ms. Adair. Yes. Ms. Beebe. Yes. Mr. Buckheim. Yes. Mr. Lego. Yeah. Mr. Murray. Yes. Ms. Panzarella. Yes. Ms. Spalding. Yes. Congratulations. Congratulations, Dan. Thank you. All right, so now we are moving on to reorg. So could you do me a favor real quick, Dr. McCarron, since you're sharing your screen? We need a motion to approve the calendar, um, the meetings for this next calendar year. Um, but I'd like, could you share the document, please, real quick? Hey, Barbie. So just so we know, we are sticking with, uh, if we choose to stick with this schedule here, um, it is the third Tuesday of every month. We will not have another meeting. This meeting, we can um, hold off until February. And the only other meeting that would not be that case is the, the one in April with a little asterisk next to it. And that's due to the regular meeting and public hearing of 21-22. Dr. McCarran and Mr. Iannucci, we are going to keep July in there just in case. Is that what we're doing, like we did in previous years, and cancel if we don't have any business? Yes. Hopefully yes. we have a better summer, this upcoming summer. We don't need that meeting, but if we do, we'll be there. Um, any any questions or issues or concerns with that calendar? Nope. nope. Um, okay, then great. Then we um, will go with uh, make, make a motion to approve the third Tuesdays. Could you get back to the agenda, McCann? Nope. Please. Meetings be held at 7 o'clock. Um, in Maryville School, unless we um, continue to move to other buildings like we um, like to do. Need a motion. I'll make the motion to be my uh, Accept the calendar. Uh, second. Angel? Angel, did you second that? That wasn't me. I think that was uh, that was a no. that. I heard Dennis. That's all. Okay, so second by Dennis. Roll call, please. Ms. Adair? Yes. Ms. Beebe? Yes. Mr. Buckheim? Yes. Mr. Lego? Yeah. Mr. Murray? Yes. Ms. Ganzarella? And Ms. Sam? Ms. Sams? No. Ms. Spalding? Yes. Motion passes. Okay, so now we're moving on to New Jersey School Boards Association, Camden County School Board Association, and Camden County Educational Services Commission. Uh, Mr. Buckheim, since you are here, Chaz, would you like to continue with your role since you've been so active at the Camden County Educational Services Commission? Or would you like someone else to? Well, I'll do it because uh, I, I'm also the treasurer, and if I don't stay on the committee, they're going to have to find a new treasurer. And I'm well, with with uh, the guys over there in, in the business office, so I'll continue attending. Awesome! Thank you so much. We appreciate your uh, additional time that you put in to represent us in Runnymede. Um, 
anybody want, I did speak to Naomi um, when she called me earlier today and let me know that she could not make it um, since she is our representative and I believe um, actually on a few board, other boards as well in within the state and she was okay with remaining our um, representative for New Jersey School Board Association and Camden County School Board Association because she does go to most events. Does anybody have any problems with that or would like to take one of them? No. So then we are going to, I'm going to need a motion to have NJSBA. Naomi Davidson, CCBA, CCSBA, excuse me, Naomi Davidson, and CCESC, uh, Mr. Chaz Buckheim. Yep. Motion. I'll make that motion to approve board members as representatives. I'll check it. And Patty, I heard first. Sorry, Dennis, I can't, and you keep breaking up on me. Roll call. No, Ms. Dare. Yes. Ms. Beebe? Yeah. Mr. Buckheim? Yes. Mr. Lego? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. Ms. Panzarello? Yes. Ms. Falding? You forgot Ms. Sams, yes. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. Yep. And Ms. Falding? Yes. Motion passes. At this time, you need approval, approval for the minutes of the regular meeting on December 15th. Can you make that motion? Motion made by Maria. I'll second that. Second by Chess. Any questions? Roll call. Ms. Beebe? Mr. Buckheim? Yes. Ms. Adair, I'm sorry. You're abstaining from that? I'm abstaining, anyhow. Thank you. Mr. Leo? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. Ms. Panzarello? Yes. Ms. Sams? Yes. Ms. Baldy? Abstain. Motion passes. Could you please scroll down a little bit for me? Absolutely. So now, I'm going to mute myself, and you are going to present the 2020 audit. So for the 2020 um, audit, the audit is officially completed. Um, our auditor is coming starting usually in July when they start their work um, for the end of June 30th, 2020. And the audit was just completed this past month due to waiting for um, general auditing practices to be put out by the state as far as what they are required to follow or any changes that are there. Um, as a part of the audit, they look at our general account, our agency accounts, our student activity accounts, our food service accounts, also our before and after care, and all Business, all business practices throughout the district as far as how things are procured, how items are received. Um, for this year, for 2020, there are zero audit findings, so there are no corrective action plans for this year. Um, I would like to thank all of the staff members who are involved in any aspect of the audit, and I would also like to thank especially my business office for all their hard work and making sure that everything is ready and prepared for the auditors when they come in, because even when they leave, they always send additional emails and have additional things to say. Um, so at this time, they're... Um, there will be no corrective action plan. The only thing you are approving this evening is that you have received the audit and that you are aware of it so that way we can submit it to the state by February 4th. Any questions? Okay. No questions here. I just thank no. you and your staff for all of your hard work. Thank you very much. Yeah. At this time, if there's no um, questions for Dr. McCarran, I'm going to move on to recognizing any public comments. Can I just... Sorry to interrupt. Um, yeah. I want, we didn't have a chance to add on the agenda, but I just want to add some correspondence real quick, if I could. Sure. Um, over the break, we received from the 5th Legislative District, from, as you know, uh, William, Mullen, our, William Mullen, our Assemblyman. Um, so I'll put Ms. Yazzie on the spot right now. Um, I'm just going to read on behalf of the 5th Legislative District. We'd like to congratulate you on receiving a Community Partner Award for, from the Girl Scouts of Central and Southern New Jersey. It is an honor to represent constituents like you who continually work for a better our community. Congratulations on this accomplishment. I wish you, you continued success. They also sent Ms. Yazzie a nice bound resolution from the Senate and State Assembly. Uh, it was a joint legislative uh, resolution that I will present to you tomorrow um, when I run into you, obviously socially distant, and uh, hopefully you can hang that someplace special. We'd love to congratulate you for all your work that you do in uh, generating interest in the girls' house. So thank you very much, Ms. Yazzie, for that. Okay. On behalf of the 5th District. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. My pleasure. Do I have you. Anything else? No, thank you. Okay. At this time, we are open for public comments, but the comments must be on agenda items only. Just please unmute yourself if anybody has any comments on agenda items at this time. It's silent on my end. Um, so, Superintendent, correct me if I'm wrong, Superintendent's reports and Business Administrator uh, Curriculum, Director of Curriculum Report will resume in February. Uh, yeah, I'm going to give a quick couple comments if I could. I know sure. I sent you a more developed report, um, but I did prepare a few things. Um, good evening, everybody. Happy New Year, obviously. I um, just want to take a moment to pass along our condolences to the Sylvester family. Um, as many of you know, um, losing a student is never easy. Um, and we just want to pass along our deepest sympathies um, regarding Luke. He was such a great kid. 
and we know the community's come together to respectfully um, support the family. I know some of the staff members already organized some uh, same things to do some things for the family moving forward. So we'll keep up to date on that, but we just want to let you know that you are in our thoughts and prayers moving forward. Um, this week, the students and staff returned virtually on Monday to resume our current instructional model. Um, over the break, we were able to fix devices and distribute school supplies as needed uh, to prepare for this upcoming instruction. Reminder of our families and food distribution is still taking place on Wednesdays from 10 to 12 adults. Uh, please make sure you do fill out the weekly survey that's sent out to ensure your name is on the list. Um, again, our, commi- our holiday committee did a great job distributing food baskets and gifts to family on Wednesday, December 23rd. Um, thank you to all our counselors and nurses that organized that and um, got those things out to the community. A special thanks to Mr. Maddies who um, met me at Bolts on Christmas Eve so we could get the last of the gifts out for a family that was displaced so they get the gifts out to those kids. I want to thank her for taking her time you know, on that day delivering those packages to those, those kids. Uh, and we're happy to officially accept that Dick's Sporting Goods Sports Matter grant. The $5,000 check was sent to us last week. It's already deposited in our accounts. I know we are looking forward to spending that. Um, finally, I want to review and discuss our school schedule moving forward. As you know, we face many challenges the school year and obstacles presented to us. Our main goal in planning is always the health and safety of our students and staff. We create a plan over the summer with the resources at hand while navigating building space, new protocols, and staffing challenges that impacted us on a weekly basis. We believe what we, we did the best we could with all the factors and difficult choices we had to, had to make. We made changes to enhance our structural model on a weekly basis and appreciate the feedback we received from those in the community. When we return to in-person instruction, we will see an increase in student and teacher live instruction opportunities where we can. The building administration and teachers will continue to look for ways to do that. We all agree that students need to be in school like they were prior to the pandemic. However, we know this is not possible under the circumstances we have to face. Um, we've used the data guidance from the local, state, local and state health departments to safely get students and staff back into our buildings. One piece of information we use is a weekly COVID activity level report, along with the COVID regional risk, regional risk matrix, excuse me. And this provides data and public health recommendations from local health departments and schools to consider based on the level of COVID tra- transmission in our region. The two pieces of information we take from the county report are case rate, based on new COVID cases per 100,000 residents, and percent positivity of COVID PCR tests that are monitored on a seven-day average, and provide measurements that give us the current activity level. Case rates greater than 25% is considered very high. Percent positivity between 10 and 20% is considered high. When we shift in the November all virtual remote model, we're in overall orange, which is a high risk, a high risk category, in which the guidance recommends considering implementing full remote learning. We are still in the orange as of last week, and the numbers remain high. The impact of the holidays and the culmination of gathering over the last several weeks have led to increased numbers, so we're still keeping an eye on that. Combined with the latest guidance that requires those with COVID and positive results and those with compatible symptoms, those who are in close contact are required to quarantine. I'm recommending that we delay the start of in-person instruction until at least February 1st, 2021, and continue to monitor the numbers and evaluate the situation. Um, we have been meeting on a regular basis, and I try to keep the board up to date, um, and we're trying to base all our decisions off of data and what we think is in the best interest of everybody. Um, We've heard a lot of positive feedback with the all remote plan. Um, we've had some parents shift from the hybrid to the all remote plan with that. Um, so that's what would be the recommendation I'd like to make. I and mean, I'd like any feedback from you know either the board or administrative team. I know we've met over the last couple of weeks. Um, but I'd like to uh, get feedback from any of you at this time. I have a question. Sure. So maybe, I mean, I was ill myself. So, maybe, so forgive me, but this is the first that I'm, that I'm hearing this. Maybe I don't know if that's the case with other board members as well. Um, so could you tell me what made you extend it? Like, what did you just? Well, I'm just. I, I'm not, it would be a recommendation. I mean, I'm not saying that that's what we're going to. It's my recommendation I make. Um, I just, I would just like feedback. I'm just, I'm concerned with the numbers from the reports we're getting. Uh, you know, what well, so are my question to you? So what, what would make you? What data are you assessing? That Sean, could you pull that? Could you pull that? Um, yeah, that would make we work on today. That would make you extend it. Hold on one second. I think it's difficult for me right now to process. Um, and, and make and make a decision. Although I do want to hear how the decision was made, and I want to know. I, my question to you um, was going to be: If we are changing when we notify parents, because that's always my main concern. Parents are working full time in our community, yeah. and, um, and we need to get them. Well, as, I, as I put it, when I put a letter out last week to the community, I said we'd like to have a decision made by uh, January eighth, mm-hmm. um, and that's part. Of, you know, this discussion tonight is going to kind of kind of drive some of that decision making. Well, then I apologize. I'm looking for that now. That's yeah, I, I I saw this earlier, but just keep, keep it up for everybody else. But is Sorry. this the only factor? Is this is this data the only factor that um that that you're making that suggestion off of? I mean, that, that's a piece of. I said that's a piece of the data that we use. We also take the recommendations. I'm meeting with the county health department on Thursday and again on Friday. And again, when, when we shifted into the orange phase, the recommendation is to you know shift into all remote learning. Um, 
we haven't gotten to that red phase yet, which is it's fortunate. But if you take a look at those numbers with case rate um, and that percent positivity, it, it's you know those those are two of the factors that they're using uh, when we meet with them on a weekly basis. So every week they'll send you that those reports. So that's usually from the previous week. Sean, can you fill that up a little bit? Right, and I've been following that, and I looked at yeah. this earlier today. Okay. So, so correct me if I'm wrong. So you're saying that the county, is the county recommends if it's in the orange that we mm -hmm. stay all remote. That would be the recommendation. Although that, although the decision is up to us as a district. Yeah. Yes. That's just a recommendation from them. Correct? Yes. Yes. And is this the main reason why you and your team are recommending that we we continue with remote learning? Well, I'm concerned with coming back, the way things it looks it's going, it, be able to safely staff the buildings on a consistent basis Okay. Um, in the next month. And I, I, I don't like, I've heard horror stories where people are getting phone calls on Sunday night at 10 o'clock saying schools are canceled for a week. So, um, go ahead. So that, that's my, that, that would be a concern. That's you know, one of the factors we also look at. Okay. We don't want to have start where we start up and then two or three days later, we're having to shut down again. Yes, I, I don't want that to happen either. But what's going to change with our staffing between January 19th and February 1st? I'm just, well, hope, hopefully we can start getting vaccines in people's arms in the next couple of weeks. Um, I'm also concerned County. I'm, I'm also concerned with quarantine uh, restrictions that are still in place um, for our staff members. Again, a lot of these things, people weren't, it's not that they were doing anything. They could have been, when we went remote instruction in November, we had people had to quarantine because it could have been a staff member, or excuse me, a family member that was exposed um, or was case confirmed positive. Yes. So you're so when you you think in your professional opinion that January nineteenth, from January nineteenth to February first, that there would be less people that that are in the need, less staff members that are in the need to quarantine. Is that what you're saying? I'm not sure it would be less. I just think that we're going to run into. I think we're going to run into problems through the month of January. Um, well, if, the problem, if, the, if the numbers, staffing problems, and you know, transmission problems as well. Well, won't those problems still exist in February though? Like if we don't get back to the norm. And I'm just playing devil's advocate here, again, because this is the first that I'm hearing of it, so I didn't have really a chance to digest, and I'll be quiet if any other board member has something to add, but, you know, like, as a board member, I want to know what your decision's based upon. I have to answer to the community, and I'm a parent myself, and an educator, so I don't understand, like, really what would happen, what would the difference be from January staffing-wise from January 19th to February 1st? You're just thinking that there'll be less people, but you can't, that's not a guarantee. Well, I don't think anything in this whole experience has been a guarantee, right. so no, it's not, there's no guarantees. You know, what I don't want to happen, honestly, I want to go back to school. That's just my personal opinion. I want to go back to school, and I want my son back in school. That's my opinion. I'm allowed to publicly say it. Um, however, I don't. Um, I respect and value everybody else's opinions um, and concerns, and they're extremely valid. Um, however, I don't, I don't want to continue every month or every two weeks putting my working parents, which is a large majority of our population in the town, in situations where they believe that there's a date. And, and even though you send them a letter and email after email after email, not as many texts as the lunch, um, but you said, I, I read everything. I get everything twice, as a matter of fact. But I just don't really quite under, understand the thought process there. I guess I need a little bit of time to, to digest. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mute myself in case someone else has a question. I have a quick question, Mark. Um, did they give any guidance as to what, at what point teachers and staff members fall into um, the, the order of vaccinations? We're in the 1B tier, um, so we were able to, I, I know I sent some of the information out, um, to get on the back vaccination registration list. So they're hoping by January 20th we could um, start receiving that first dosage. Okay. So I also noticed here, too, that yes, it is a little on the high side, but I mean, I personally have a feeling it's probably going to go down by January 19th. Mm -hmm. So what if these numbers go back to where they were back in early November? You know, then what do we do? Do we, do we go back right away? Do you still want to hold for two weeks at that point? Because you really can't tell a month out. I mean, you can kind of tell that where it starts to spike at, it's going to be, of course, around Thanksgiving, and you're going to see it again around Christmas time. When you look at the data they've used from the holidays over the pandemic regarding Memorial Day, 4th of July, uh, Halloween, and now what they're what they're projecting for hospitals is January 20th or 21st to our hospitals to be at capacity, you know, global hospitals to be capacity levels. Capacity levels as in no room left? As in beds and hallways and things like that. Oh, okay. I have not heard that. That's why I would, uh, I, would, I, would I, I have two of my neighbors are nurses, one at Jefferson and one at Cooper, and I've had these conversations over the last couple, you know, over the last couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. And that's a concern when you're looking at the information from um, other holidays and things like that. 
One other thing I will mention that will be different when we do return than when we were in school hybrid previously is also the fact that the Department of Health has also informed schools that they cannot be fully responsible for all of the contact tracing. And that's correct, Mark. So that would mean that the schools are then responsible for the contact tracing. So that would look different when we go back. And I can tell you from my own children's school district, many times schools have had to close if they didn't have the full report done for contact tracing to determine whether or not what's what was taking place, whether or not it was a school-related event or a non-school-related event, and whether or not the community members were participating well with that. So it will look different for our nurses as well once we go back to hybrid because of the fact that an administration, because contact tracing will be done differently, but in conjunction with the Department of Health. Sean, this is Charlie Buckeye. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, I just want to interject as far as kind of what Mark was saying, you know, being retired, being home, having a surgery in the past month and not being able to get out and do much. I get to watch the news throughout the day and all the top doctors in the United States believe that the number of cases are going to increase during the rest of this month because of the Christmas holiday and the New Year's holiday of people getting together. So, you know, we all look forward to the day when we're back to school five days a week, all day. Amen. I agree with, uh, with you there, Samantha. But I think right now, uh, we're probably not going to see those numbers drop off maybe for another month or two, unfortunately, because of the, the number of people that travel and the people that still are knuckleheads and don't think this can spread and they can get together with 25, 30 people. Uh, so, you know, I, I've seen different news networks with different doctors, uh, top doctors, and they feel that it's going to subside, but not until we get more people vaccinated and we get through the problems that are going to be created by the, the Christmas and New Year holidays. Well, I, I guess the, I guess the problem with all that is that I don't know that the uh, I don't know that the two weeks is going to be long enough. So, yeah, if, if you, so if you go out two weeks and then we come back in ten days and we tell these people two more weeks, February fifteenth or whatever the date is, like I don't well, we can't do that. Um, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't know. I, I know there's. Uh, you know, the whole thing's been so uh, crazy on TV and everything, and nobody knows the right answer. But I just think that if we're going to pick a date, that, that I don't think two weeks is going to make that much of a difference. So we may, really need to be looking into later February if, if, if we're going to do this at all. And yeah, I think one of the concerns was that the board wanted. You know, the board didn't want to leave parents hanging or give them a last minute decision. And I just think at this point, looking at the data, I think. You know, from an administrative standpoint, from other people who we've, who've been spoken, we've been speaking to, I feel as though the concern was whether or not January 19th, we would be okay, 100%. You ain't going to be okay. Well, we chose January 19th because it's after the two-week window from the holidays. So that's why we originally did it. And I agree 100% with, with what you said, Angel, Chaz, and Dan, but I don't feel like coming in here every two weeks. Like, I feel like we have over, you know... We got 70-something percent, correct me if I'm wrong, 73% of our students on a hybrid model, correct? 73%? Over 600 of our students were on a hybrid model? Don't make them eyebrows at me. How many? How many? I would, have to, I would have to pull the current number. I don't have that number in front of me. The number may have changed, but when we started, that's where we were at. We were about 75%. So I just feel like as elected officials and school board members, we have to do what the safety and priority is our um, students and our staff. But I, I agree with Dan. Like, I'd like want, I want, like, a concrete, you know, uh, like if, if we're going to say February 1st and I want to have an emergency meeting and I want to have a January meeting and I want to, I want to look where we're at and I want to talk about where we're at and I want to make a decision. I don't want to keep going every two weeks for the working, the working parents in this community. I mean, of course, I believe that this board is going to um, respect the wishes of our administration. However, I don't want to keep, I don't want to keep doing it every two weeks. It's just not fair. And I understand, believe me, my family personally went through it. Um, however, I, I, and, I, and I understand, but, <clears throat> you know, not everybody is as fortunate as everybody who's speaking right here to have the help and guidance and support at home. And I'm thinking about our students and our community members when I speak. So is this on the agenda tonight or not? There was nothing. I mean, the, obviously, the recommendation wouldn't be I just wanted feedback. It doesn't need to be approved. I mean, I'd like the support of the board um, moving forward. But if it's not, you know. It's not something that was being approved tonight. It's a discussion that we should maybe push this back further, maybe to at least the middle of February. It gives more consistency and balance to families having to juggle their jobs, take care of their kids, and etc. Instead of it, you know, getting something a new notification every two weeks. So I support what Dan and Sam saying that possibly we should push it back now. Or further. We're going to no try. 
what's our, um, I know we were coming back after that MLK date. What's our um, calendar? I'm sorry, I always mess up my personal okay. calendar with the Run Me calendar. What's our February uh, President's Day weekend look like? When is that? What's that? The, fifth, the 15th is President's Day. So we would, that, that break, after that break would be February 16th? Yes. Yeah. No, guys, that's a long time. That, that, that's been almost at a full year at that point. You know, and that's going to be if, if we started this, we'd only be around for two weeks. Oh, I agree. Oh, believe me, I'm in the thick of it. I've been in the thick of it for a year. <laughs> and that's why it's tough to even think because you don't know what, what trend it's going to take. So that's why, you know, with the two weeks, at least we can see are the numbers going up or are they going down. But I mean, we literally left in March thinking we'd be back first week in April. Yeah. And the students are off. The students are off on 14, 13, yeah. 12, 12 and the 15th anyway. They're not off the 12th, they're off the 15th. Oh, they're off the 12th, they're off the 12th. We have a staff developing yeah, that. They're definitely, they always have four days off. In the calendar. They don't this year. Why not? <laughs> that wasn't in the calendar. Exactly, you, Mark. So, we, we <laughs> say that, if we say that in the middle of the month, Angel, just hear me out for a second. If we say that in the middle of the month, when's our board meeting? The 16th. The, 16th. the day that we would return. That's essentially, when you think about it, Angel, I can't believe that. Um, that's essentially only 10, in this big grand scheme of things, it's essentially only 10 more school days. February 1st to February to February 16th, giving us, it's essentially only 10. I have my calendar up. It's the 1st to the 5th and the 8th to the 12th. I mean, we all know how I feel, but I feel, I, I, I feel a little bit more positive saying this and saying, like, we're, this is when we're going back, unless we're in a red. If we're in orange, we're still going back. Just to get some normalcy. Go back when? The 16th. Okay. Oh, I'm saying, like, we reevaluated it here. We listened to what you have to say. Mm -hmm. There's multiple board members with concerns. There's multiple board members with concerns going back on the 1st as well. 10 more days, although I still stand by everything I said, would give us that, would give us, it's only 10 more school days, and it would give us essentially an, an additional month home. Because it would be the 19th to the 16th, so minus three days. What are other districts doing? Does anyone know at this point? Anyone some else districts back that far? Some districts have pushed them back to, you know, the first. Some are, some are still evaluating or to make decisions next week. Yeah, I, I heard uh, several districts, at least with, with uh, my own staff, who are struggling and scrambling to try to find, you know, people to watch their kids as well. Um, they uh, had their district pushed back to our original date of, of mid January. So they're, they're just not getting that notification now. Should, so. should, should we set an emergency meeting for one night next week? And, uh, at, uh, Mark, have you meet with the health officials and get some more data and have better information to make a better decision on this? Does that make sense? You are meeting that on Thursday and Friday, correct? Yes. So maybe we meet early next week and, and get it out. I mean, whatever we decide, we can get it out as fast as possible. And uh, I mean, I'm, I'm available. I don't know what everybody else's schedule is. I'm just trying to make the smartest decision we can and get the most data that we can and maybe, you know, get it in front of us and go from there. And, and maybe some of the community members that are here, you know, can, okay. the staff members can, can, you know, send emails or whatever and tell us their thoughts. Does that make sense to everybody, or? Now it does. Okay. Yes, I guess. Do we need to go off of county numbers? Like, can we see, like, running meet numbers, or does that not matter? Uh, I could ask I could ask the county health department to give me the running meet numbers. I know it was up to 300, 375 cases right now in the running meet. Right. I, I could also grab some running meet numbers. They do, they do lag behind generally about a week or so before we get them at the station, but I can definitely get numbers. Well, can we have those RFP numbers for our meeting next week so we can see it county wide plus run of our own community? I'll, I'll, I'll bring, I'll get what I have. And I'll there's, actually, everybody. there's actually a dashboard that the county puts out that tells you each municipality and what their numbers are looking like. Yeah. I mean, you, anyone can see it at any point in time. What yeah. is the percentage for orange? Is 10, right? Is it 10? 10. 10 to 20 is orange. Mark, put, can you put that, can you put that, um, I'm uh, looking for my thing. Um, Sorry, I was talking to, I, I said your name, but I was asking Sean to put that back up. The percent positive is about 10.01 to 20% is considered high. And that's the orange, high is orange? Can we? Yes. Okay. So one of these at 106? 106. I'm not sure that number. I don't know who said that because I can't see everybody that's here. Yeah. Does, it, does anybody have um, any other suggestions or comments, board members, on, on this? Mark, do you have anything to add? 
I mean, like I said, I was hoping to get the information out to, you know, by the end of this week, but if, if that's what, you know, if we want to push it back another couple of days. Do you want to do so, Thursday night? Do you want to do a meeting Thursday night? Market? Because it sounds like to me that we're definitely going to close until the first. I mean, the, the, the concern is whether we're going to actually extend it out even further uh, based on, on the data that you obtained. So I don't know. I mean, I could do third. I, I, it's up to everybody else, but that's how I'm looking at it. It sounds like the first is a definite, but we just don't want to go, okay, the first and then go, okay, two more weeks. And I think everybody agrees with that philosophy, but. Um, yeah, maybe we do. If, if, if we can do something later this week, I'm available. I just uh, I want to get it out as fast as we can as well, but I just don't want to get it out and then have to change it. I would just need 48 hours before we are able to advertise. So at this point, I wouldn't be able to hold a meeting until Friday. Oh, because tomorrow is Wednesday. Correct. So we'll go out Wednesday. The earliest would be Friday. Well, Michael, Mark, we got a letter that we're meeting and that we're going to that we're going to extend and we're going to try and um, concrete a date. Um, Right, Mark? Yep. Yeah. I can do whatever, you know, whatever's required. So do you want to stick with Monday then? So then you'll have two meetings, but you have um, our support to put something out to the families that it's going to be extended. You just don't know a date, and you will get back to them as soon as possible? I can do that. All right. Are you okay with that? Yeah. Uh, so do you have a meeting next week as a board? Yeah, after we gather more data and have some more time to 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 process this and um, answer your two meetings. Okay. Not that you need. We know that board approval isn't isn't needed. However, um, like you said, just to have support because again, this was the first time that we were like that we heard this. So um, give us some time to digest. Give um, the community some time to digest. Give um, you have two very important meetings coming up Thursday and Friday. We should be in a better place. Although it's only one week away, we would still be in a better place. Mark, what's your thought process on the, the later the later date? Like I know, I mean, if you want to move it to the, I mean, I'm I'm for that as well. I'm just trying again. I want kids back in school. I don't teach want kids to get kids the best we can. I want my like Samantha said, I want my own two kids back in school. Um, you know, I I, have, I would have no problems making that recommendation for the fifteenth either if it's minus you know an extra two weeks. I'm just you know I, I do get concerned with the numbers. I do get concerned for our students and our staff members. Um, you know, when you hear it's going to be worse than it was back in the spring. So yeah. you want to go with the fifteenth and not have a meeting next week? Because I mean, it's only ten additional school days. What's your What's your gut? You're, and, it's four, and if you look at the hybrid model, it's four additional. It would be four days for each kid. I mean, I, I don't like the question. I, don't, I think our model right now is working as far as the all remote. I know I'm here, I'm here to you know nine positives to one negative. If, if that negative exists, you know, since right. the last time we talked. Um, so I, I, I'm, I'm happy with our all remote plan. Um, I do appreciate everything the staff's doing and the parents are doing to get the kids through it. Uh, I do it every day myself, so I know how hard it is. Um, so if we want to push to the 15th and make that the call, that's, you know, I'm fine with that as well. Are non-board members allowed to chime in at this point? Yeah, you'll, you'll, have time, you'll have time to speak at the end. Okay. Thank you. So at this point, that would be February 16th. That would be Tuesday because we're off on that Monday. Correct, but we were already off on that Monday anyway. Right. This is Charles again. This is Chad. Can I make a suggestion? Yes. We uh, move along. Let's just to hear what any parents have. I think we need to hear their input as well. And then we can make the decision to either have another board meeting on Monday or make the decision. But uh, as one board member, I would like to hear uh, the thoughts of some of the parents out in our community. Sounds like a plan to me. So why don't we then go ahead and um, put the agenda back up? I don't believe over the holidays that there would be any other reports, so we'll move along to new business. So under property and transportation, I need a motion to approve items numbers one and two. I'll make that motion. Motion made by Chaz. I'll second it. Second by Angel. Any questions? Roll call. Ms. Adair. Yes. Ms. Beebe. Yes. Mr. Buckson. Yes. Mr. Lego. Yes. Mr. Murray. Yes. Ms. Panzarello. Yes. Ms. Sams. Yes. Ms. Spalding. Yes. Motion passes. Yes. Scroll down, please. Under personnel, I need a motion to approve items numbers one through six. I'll make a motion to approve items one through six under personnel. I'll second it. Need a motion made by Dennis, seconded by Patty. Any questions? Roll call. Ms. Adair. Yes. Ms. Beebe. Yes. Mr. Buckhan. Yes. Mr. Lego. Yes. Mr. Murray. Yes. Ms. Panzarello. Yes. Ms. Sims. Yeah. Ms. Walding. Yes. Mr. Dances. Under finance, I need a motion to approve items numbers one through three. I'll make that motion. I'll make that motion. Yep. 
Motion made by Angel, second by Chaz. Any questions? Roll call. Ms. Adair. Yes. Ms. Beebe. Yes. Mr. Buckheim. Yes. Mr. Lego. Yes. Mr. Murray. Yes. Ms. Panzarella. Yes. Ms. Sams. Yes. Ms. Spalding. Yes. Motion passes. I'm sorry, can you scroll back up for a minute? I was writing something down. Under curriculum, I need a motion to approve items numbers one through five. I'll make a motion to approve numbers one through five under curriculum. I'll second that, Chad. Motion made by Patty, seconded by Dan. Any questions? Yes. Roll call. Ms. Adair. Yes. Ms. Beebe. Yes. Mr. Buckheim. Yes. Yeah. Mr. Lego. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Lego? Okay. Mr. Murray? Yes. Ms. Panzarella? Yes. Ms. Sams? Yes. Ms. Spalding? Yes. Motion passes with seven votes. Roll down. Hey, Mark, can I call you back? I'm going to call you right back. Oh, I thought you were talking to me. Under policy and public relations, I need a motion to approve item number one. I make that motion for item number one. Motion, I'll second. motion made by Angel, seconded by Patty. I don't think anybody have any questions about this. No, great news. Yes. Roll call. Ms. Adair. Yes. Ms. Beebe. Yes. Mr. Buckheim. Yes. Mr. Lego. Yes. Mr. Lego, do you approve curriculum also? Yes. Okay. Mr. Murray. Yes. Ms. Panzarello. Yes. Ms. Sams. Yes. Ms. Walding. Yes. Motion passes. All right, so at this time, we are open for public comments from citizens and staff who may be on the meeting. And I do uh, value, we all value your, um, I need you to go back to that, please. Sorry. Just because I want to make sure, not that we would ever try to cut someone off or um, not say that your um, opinion or voice shouldn't be heard or valued, but there are some, um, um, pro there's protocol to put that up, Dr. McCarran, please, there's Sorry. protocol you see on the agenda um, that it's limited to three minutes per person and if you when you're on by Dr. McCarran um we're like we'll take turns um if you can just make sure that you state I'm, I'm kind of just paraphrasing that you state um any uh, like your name and address and also that when you're speaking that you're not you're, you're speaking like your opinion you're not bringing up any type of um complaint or formal complaint that you may have or an issue you may, you may have with a teacher or a staff member that's not this isn't the time or place there's a proper chain of command for that um, but at this time, we are open for public comments. Sorry, Dr. McCarran, thank you. No I'll go. So my name is Heather. Um, I live at 843 North Reed. My son is Nikki. He goes to Bingham. Um, I appreciate being given the chance. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Heather. What's your last name? Oh, Capel. Capel, thank you. C-A-P-E-L-L. -L. Uh, so I appreciate being given the chance to speak. So a little background about me. I'm a registered nurse. Um, I have a unique situation where I actually work in New Jersey Transit, and I have been heavily involved in our COVID response and task force. So I've been following the numbers a lot. Trust me. I report out positives. I talk to people. So I'm, I have a lot of, you know, numbers that float in my head for all of New Jersey. I know that Camden County's numbers are not nearly as high as other counties. Uh, we are probably number eight out of all the counties, I think, last I checked. Um, I think that t towns like Camden, Pennsylvania, and Fort Hughes, Winslow, um, and a couple of the other bigger towns have skewed the numbers because they, like, I think Camden's at like 2,000 plus, maybe more at this point. Um, you know, I, I just want to get a, a really good idea of where you're getting, like, I, we're in an orange phase, I get that. Um, I don't know that keeping these kids home is any better, but, you know, we struggle even with a two-income household. Nikki goes to daycare five days a week. His daycare is open. Catholic schools are open. I'm just trying to figure out um, why all these kids can go to those places, but they can't go to their own school room. I mean, I am not happy with the remote learning. It's been a struggle for us. Nikki goes to daycare. He's in a room with other children, even with his headset on. He still has a number of children who are not remote learning, who it can be very distracting for I can't stay home. My husband can't stay home. We don't have friends and family that can help us. Um, I'm sure I'm not the only parent that's in that situation. I'm just trying to figure out why we keep pushing this back when, you know, daycares are open, Catholic schools are open. It's, I know the numbers aren't great. And, and, and we're talking about the vaccine. Are you going to mandate your teachers to get the vaccine? I know we're not mandating any of our frontline operators or even our medical staff to get vaccinated. And if they don't get the vaccine, are, they, are we still going to be pushing this back because, oh, the teachers aren't vaccinated? It, that's all. And I really appreciate your comments, your concerns, and your expertise in the area. And I thank you for um, coming forward and speaking your mind. I appreciate that. Thank you. No oh, problem. No problem. Next. Hi, 
Hi, this is Tracy Hobble, 675 First Avenue, and I'm also a teacher in the district. I just want to tell you, I, I, I completely support what Mr. Ayanucci is saying right now. I mean, we are working very hard this remote model, and I feel like I am getting to more kids and seeing more of my kids. I get to see my remote kids every day now, which I didn't get to see them earlier in the year because they had a remote teacher. The kids, I have 95% of my kids coming every single day, and the ones that aren't are watching the lessons that I'm recording every day, and they're doing their work, and I'm having interaction with all these kids, and the kids are all interacting with each other. In class, we only have a small amount of time, and we're limited with what we can do with the hybrid. And I just know with the numbers the way they are now, I saw it right before we went out. We had classrooms going down because people had to quarantine, and nothing has changed since we went out. So I think we're just going to have to go back to school, and these parents had everything set up right now, and then we go back, and next thing you know, we're going to have to quarantine a whole class again, and then parents are scrambling. Right now, they have plans in place. And truthfully, I think a decision needs to be made sooner rather than later, because like, I get out written work to my kids, too. So if I'm going to have to send out stuff for after January 19th, I need to have that all ready to go out by next Tuesday or Wednesday for parents to pick up. So I think I need to sit, we need decisions sooner, like, if possible tonight. I know that's, I know there's all kinds of things going with the board. I understand you guys have, have the right, you guys want to go talk about this in closed session, but that's just my opinion right now. Thank you, Mrs. Hummel, as always. Can I take a turn to speak? My name's Julia Conti. Sure, sure. Could you just have um, your address, please? Yep, 133 North Reed Avenue. Thanks. I have children in both Bangalore and Volt School. Um, I know I've addressed my concerns before the board at the last meeting with return to the hybrid session and what was going to happen with the full remote students. Um, I just also wanted to bring forth with um, what the discussion was earlier. I'm not sure if, so through my work, I work for a visiting nurse agency, and um, I'm aware of new quarantine guidelines which state that, like, if somebody in the household is COVID positive, that all the other members of the household have to quarantine for 14 days from the last contact with that person, which possibly could mean that people have to quarantine for a total of 24 days. Is our staffing level, do we have subs in place? Do we have plans at the school level for if that happens to a teacher that they are going to have to be out for 24 days? Um, what happens if another teacher comes in contact with them and then they are have to be out for, I guess, their last contact would have been, they'd have to be the 10 days after their last contact. I'm just trying to find out if we are all on the same page with what the quarantine guidelines are currently, and if there are plans in place by the board and the administration to make sure that, like you're talking about reopening these schools um, and not having a shutdown again in two weeks. Again, it doesn't matter for me. My kids are going to be full remote for the foreseeable future, but I do, I feel these other parents that have to work and have to come up with these plans, and I, I don't want, like, school districts like Cherry Hill, I have a lot of friends in the Cherry Hill schools, they are not happy at all. Every time it is a last-minute decision, they blame the superintendent of schools, they blame the board, and it's frankly not their fault. They are really trying to do in the best interest of the teachers and the students, but it is a last-minute decision, and it's hurting the district image that way. Absolutely. I think that you could see, no matter what our feelings are, that we don't want to do that, um, and uh, we pride ourselves here as a board to agree to disagree and always support our administration team, um, which is why we were asking for a little bit more time because um, I understand um, as an educator myself what Mrs. Hummel said, but um, it just was, we also hear from, you know, every time we go to a store, we hear from different parents and every time that we, you know, take our dog for a walk, well, uh, we hear from different community members. So we have to take our entire, all of our stakeholders in and the last thing we want to do. We are aware of the quarantine, and that was part of the issue back in November because parents were getting mad at us about that, or or, or not being truthful, which was what what, what made us have, have to do this in the first place. But we would never want ever any type of last minute decision or make a last minute decision unless, like we had to with Volts, it was an absolute emergency and we didn't have enough data because we have to at that point do something. No, and I completely understand that, and I think too, like the parents. If any other parents are on here listening, as community members, we need to be honest and truthful with this contact tracing. We cannot continue to try to hide or do something self-serving in order to allow the kids back into school that have come in contact with. That's what I'm afraid I hear all the time through my job. Contact tracing is a brick wall. Nobody wants to participate with it, and that is a very big key in getting this under control and stopping the spread especially with this new form of the virus that's coming out now that we're still hearing research on. I mean, it's changing every day. There's conflicting reports out of Great Britain where it seems to be the epicenter right now. But we need to pay attention to that, too, because unfortunately it is here in the United States. And over the next couple of weeks, I think we're going to feel the effects of that as well. Good point. I wrote that down as well. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, hi. Um, this is Christine Polkovich. I live at 637 Williams Avenue. I have um, My son is in fourth grade at, at Bowles, and um, he's a special needs student. 
and um, so I have a little bit different perspective. Um, the remote learning has been extremely um, difficult for him. Um, not just um, he, 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 the social aspect uh, him not going to school and being social with his friends, even though it was you know carefully done uh, when they returned in September. It's um, it's driving him uh, farther back to where he was back in the spring. Um, he's just regressing again, and um, I just want to. Uh, Every day that he's home is more and more difficult, um, and I just uh, wanted to let you know that uh, that there's a there's a, popula- a school population um, that desperately wants to get back into those classrooms um, for you know on top of the education aspect, it's a social aspect and, and the um, back on a schedule and um, there's just uh, so many there, there's so many um, there's just so much more to consider for these special needs kids and um, I just hope you can uh, just really consider consider that and uh, to take your time making this decision. Um, I, it's just uh, for, for some kids, uh, for the remote learning is wonderful and for some kids it's a struggle. And um, one, of those, uh, one of those families where it's been a struggle. We weighed the, um, the, the, uh, the risk of COVID, sending him back in person to keeping him home and we were willing to make that risk for his uh, social development. And um, I just uh, appreciate you listening and uh, if you could just keep that in mind when making your decision, I'd appreciate it. Thank you for your honesty. We appreciate your um, your comment, and we absolutely will. Any other public comments? Yes, may I say something? Andrea Coops. Hi, Andrea. Hi. 1605 Davis Road. Um, I guess my concern is, is, of course, my situation is a lot different than most. I have a child that's recovering from um, cancer treatment, and I also have a child that um, has a learning disability. Um, the full remote schedule... Now that you guys are full remote, we've been full remote, but our schedule has changed since the whole um, district went full remote, um, is doing better for my kids. I won't be sending my kids back anyway until this is all settled down because of the fact of our situation. Would it be different if I didn't have that situation? Absolutely. But I guess my concern is is that, you know, when we do go back to the hybrid model, is there a plan in place that we're not going to take all this extra live instruction away from these children that are going to be staying full remote? Um, Doc, do you want to comment on that, Mr. Ryan, because I guess we're, I mean, when I made the comment earlier, I said we've been looking for ways to enhance um, the remote model for all the kids, whether it's the hybrid or all remote kids, so we will be adding layers of um, live instruction for students, um, you know, on a, on a daily basis. It's something we've been working on discussing with the administrative team, um, and different aspects of the way to do that. It's a challenge for the younger kids. I mean, you all know having kindergarten students who have a computer for seven hours is realistic. Um, so we're looking at ways to do that. But we are going to enhance the, the live instruction and keep that format. I'm not going to say it's the exact same 100% of what it is right now, but it will be uh, similar to what your, what your kids are saying now. Because, I mean, my children are doing so much better with the structure versus them getting, you know, three hours a week or, you know, Sean was only getting an hour and 40 minutes a week of live instruction. Um, so now that they're getting, and they're not on the computer all day, they have breaks in between. And I, I think that you guys are doing a great job with the full, the new full remote schedule, um, new to us. I guess I'm just very concerned that, like, I don't want my kids' life again to be completely, you know, I want some normalcy. I don't have a choice to send them back to school. And I wish I could, believe me. <laughs> it, the, the model won't be what you saw in September through November. It will be enhanced with the live instruction uh, when we do come back. Okay, thank you. Thank you for speaking up. Appreciate your comment. Anyone else have anything to say? Hi, my name is Lauren Solzer, 329 East 3rd Ave. Hi. Um, and I just want to talk as a resident and as a uh, teacher in another school district. Um, I, I know when we went full remote, we did it last minute. Got the notice at 10 o'clock in the morning, and we were full remote. Um, that was on a Friday, and we left school at 2 o'clock, and that was it. We went full remote at that time, so I do appreciate you guys taking the time to analyze the data and look at the data. Um, and I want to say thank you to all the teachers who are out there and juggling and mixing all this. I have done every single format of teaching so far, <laughs> from high flex to full remote, so I see the pros and cons of all of it. Um, and I appreciate you guys taking the time to look at the numbers for the impact that it has, because I know from our aspect when our school went, it was because we went code orange. And with that, the who had to quarantine changed and we didn't have the staffing and the subs in order to cover who then would have to be due to uh, quarantines. And I've heard even since then schools are open that had 16 students come down, therefore having to quarantine, you know, 60 staff and students because of where these students were placed. So I know that this is a very complex issue and number wise to, to play the, uh, the forecast of who would have to quarantine. Um, and I know that that does come from a full park. I know teachers want to know the plan because uh, I I don't know what I'm teaching next week because I don't know what our plan is yet. 
Um, and I know parents want to know because parents want to be able to plan for that as well. Um, and I echo the other parents who are saying, you know, liking the full remote because it's giving their full remote students more instructional time. And I feel for the students or the parents who have students of special needs. Um, and I know some people have already kind of tossed out there looking and changing things. Um, and I know you guys talked already about the full remote changing of how that's going to look when we do go back. Um, so I just wanted to say thank you for taking the time to look at this from all the different angles that are out there because I know it's so complicated. I did want to know one of the big things I was concerned about was the eating in the classroom, the removing of the masks. And we were told that there were going to be air purifiers in the classrooms with the um, ionizations. I didn't know that there was any progress on that as of yet. Because I know they were all backward in October. So that was just like my concern as when we do go back, do we have those new features in place that we didn't have back in September? Mark, do you have the answer to that? Uh, I, I don't defer that to Frank Kind just with the supplies coming in. Frank's still there. No, I'm sorry, just to, uh, Mrs. Salter, just so um, the, I asked uh, the superintendent to answer, and he asked our um, director of maintenance to answer. So Mr. Hines is going to be the one speaking to you. We have, they uh, all came in, they were all installed into the classroom, so when they come back, every classroom has a air purifier for now. Mm -hmm. So there's no, there's no classroom in, in um, Downing or Bingham I don't, um, or any other classroom that every classroom has one where kids will be eating? Yes, we purchased one for every classroom where kids are eating, and they are actually they are installed ready to go. Thank you. Thanks, Frank. Thank you for um. Thank you for your comment as well. Thank you. Thank you know. Any other comments? Dr. McCarran, on my end, I don't see any. Do you see any others? Okay. So, could you please share your screen and put the agenda back up? I really. I'm not being, um, I, I be truly um, mean when we say thank you for our comments, because like Mr. Buckheim suggested, like, we need to hear, um, not just, you know, not just during COVID, but, you know, every month, every year, like, we need to hear what other parents um, and community members think. So we really honestly appreciate, I mean, I'm not kidding. I, I took notes down of everything that you said, every single one of you. So we appreciate you um, having, uh, speaking up for and advocating for your child and, and other children in this town and, and staff members as well. So, um, do we, how do we want to move forward? Board, Jazz, Dan, Angel, Maria, Patty, Barbie. Do we go with our original plan and meet next week or do we make a decision now? What would you suggest, boss man? You're on mute. All right, if we're looking at the increase, you know, Numbers increasing, making the recommendation for the 15th is something I would suggest you make tonight. Mark, what were the meetings you said you had there this week? I have, meeting with, I have a meeting with the Department of Health on Thursday afternoon, and then I have my county roundtable um, with, with the Department of Education on Friday morning. So that's all the superintendents in the county, for every school district in the county, um, you're meeting with on Friday. Mm -hmm. And listen, I don't mean to sound rude when I say this, but we care about Runnymede and what happens in Runnymede. Not, not that we don't care what happens in others. Yes. You know, our main concern and our main focus is our students and staff here. Mm -hmm. The only positive to waiting would be to see what happens at those meetings, although we put ourselves first, of course, we always will. Sometimes some ideas may come out of those meetings. So, I mean, it's your call, but you know, I would be inclined to uh, wait and see what DOH said. Um, I think there might be some more information coming out uh, in reference to vaccine that maybe hasn't been said yet. So, that's my fault. I support whatever decision you make. Uh, from my perspective, I would like to agree with Angel there. Uh, and after hearing the parents, uh, I would like us to wait till Monday to make a final decision. Uh, I do feel that probably my, my feeling is to extend it to the middle of February. But can we, can we also possibly see what we can do additionally for the parents that have a, a child in special needs that needs some, some additional help if we do extend it? And you're yeah. good with meeting on Monday? I, I, I'll be honest with you, I'm sorry, I have a meeting from either, uh, the district room on the school board um, on Monday, so I'm not available on Monday. Are you available Tuesday? Yes. Is everybody else available Tuesday? And Tuesday we will make a decision and put it out to the public? I'm available. I'm not available. I'm available. I'm available. Okay, so why don't, we, why don't we do that and it gives us ample time to do some research and data and take all of the things off in, um, and if anybody has any additional comments or concerns, you can feel free to email them to um, all board members have an email address, at, or you can give them to our superintendent, and who will forward them to us with your permission. And again, we thank you. What time would you like to meet Tuesday? Tell me. I don't go anywhere. Here, here I am. Wait. What do you tell me? 
You want to do it earlier? You want to do it later? It's going to be virtual. Doesn't really matter to me. I work till 2.15. Uh, the other members can make it. I mean, we can make I it. I don't think that, I, I want to speak on behalf of my friend and longtime uh, board member colleague friend, uh, Naomi. I don't think she can get here before 6.30. Okay. So I would, I would be remiss to start it anywhere before 6.30. But I would start at 6.30. I'll be working out of the home, so. Okay. Is everybody okay with 6.30? Good. And Sean can make the copper. Um, we understand if some of the admin team can't make it, um, that this was sprung on you um, pretty quickly. So our meeting then will be, uh, our special meeting in regards to looking at data will be um, on Tuesday at 6.30 virtually. And then are we still planning on meeting virtually um, and Sean on February 16th as well? I mean, our students are going to be back in the building, so I don't, I don't really feel like we should be meeting virtually if, our students, if we're asking our students and staff to go back in the building. So as of right now, we will go ahead, Mark. I'm sorry. Uh, so that's what that's that's the philosophy we, we follow back in correct June, so, July. The February 16th, and if we are, if our students are back in the building, we will be in person. Mm -hmm. We do proper social distancing and masks, of course. And Samantha, with all the changes that have taken place since April, we've done a new advertisement each month with any of those changes that have taken place. So we would just do that. Awesome. If needed. Any any anything else, board members? Anything? Yes, yeah, so okay. guys. Uh, could we have the, the updated data sent to us by Monday evening so that we can carefully review it before we meet Tuesday? I'll have it sent to you probably by Friday, Chaz. I, mean, I, I usually get that information. Would, would, that, would that be the most current data? Mm -hmm. or it, comes out every, it comes out every Thursday. Uh, you Monday. don't have to email us at 4 a.m. in the morning, Mr. I. Nucci. Okay, I'll wait. Please. Okay. <laughs> so if you, need to wait, if you need to wait until Monday, no one's going to be mad at you. Okay. I'll make sure I push that back on Friday a little bit later. All right. Uh, at this time, I need a motion to adjourn. I'll make that motion to adjourn. Motion made by Dennis. All, uh, second. I'll call second. Second. Second by Patty. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Congratulations to Dennis and Angel and Dan, my new VP. Thank you. 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 Thank